Who knows what this is? Welcome back to Ben's Garage. The old summer's coming to a drawing to a close. It's not. It's still hot. The nights are drawing in. Um, we have had some overnight temperatures which dip below 10 degrees. It's still quite high at the minute, but September coming, October into autumn. There was reports of somewhere in France had their first frost a couple of weeks ago. So that leads us on to today's little subject. Who knows what this is? A lot of our younger viewers won't have a clue because nowadays people don't even bother in to open the bonnet on their cars. It's called maintenance. Preventative maintenance. The video that was last week, preventative maintenance, we changed the intercooler hoses. This week we're going to go around all the cars and machinery we've got and test the antifreeze. This is a pretty simple antifreeze tester. You suck up the antifreeze in there, you don't let it fill up in the bulb, I'll show you how it works in a minute. Take it out and then these little discs float up. And on here, it, it actually tells you on the front, one disc floats up, that's protected down to minus seven, two discs float up, that's protected to minus 15, so on and so forth, all the way down to minus 37. If all six float, that's not safe. Antifreeze is too strong. Uh, I've never seen a car that's got too strong of an antifreeze in it, but there you go. So we're gonna pop the bonnet on the Range Rover I'll try and zoom in quite close so you can see what's going on with this and um, we'll see what strength the antifreeze is. I think it'll be quite good on this one because it's been regularly serviced. Um, not so sure about all the machinery we've got and we'll t check the old TD6 as well while we're at it and um, so we can get prepared for winter. Now you want to find your expansion bottle or the top of your radiator if it's got a cap on it. Um, Obviously, you don't want to do this job if the engine's hot because you don't want to be opening the top of the cooling system if the engine's hot because you'll get scalded. So do it when it's cold. Um, take the top off. Now you get your tool. Let me just zoom out a little bit. You do, you just stick that down into the water, squeeze the air out of the bubble, out of the top, let enough water go up to about there and then stop, lift it out of the water and then let go of the, of the, um, the bull and then hold that up. Now, I don't know if you can see that, that's three discs, four discs floating up. So we've got one, two, three at the top and we've just got the fourth one coming up now and the foot four discs is down to minus 31. If it gets that cold, we're moving countries. Um, but it's protected. That'll account for wind chill factor as well in the winter. So just put it back in there, squeeze all the antifreeze out. And then we'll go on to the next bit of machinery. That doesn't, that's like a safety thing, so that just clicks when it's when it's locked. So on the digger, a bit tricky because the radiator is right in there. So we'll take the cap off. Put the cap on there. And what I have to do is come in a bit of a funny angle. Let that fill up. Let the water settle. On that we've got two discs have floated up. That'll protect us down to minus 15. Oh, and I've just broken the thing already. That was good.
Tina's taken the uh, radiator cap off because it's a little bit awkward to get to because I can't get around that side because the way I've parked it up, <coughs> um, the gangs are all down. So, is there water in it? Can you tell? Looks like it, from what I can see. Try that. Oh, Christ, look at that colour. Stop there, take that out. Let all the air out. One, two, three, four. Minus 31. Can you put that back in the radiator? And I'll... That's it. That's green again as well. So what am I doing? Right. Put that in the, in the thing, squeeze the, the ball, right now let it out so that the water gets nearly to the ball but stop before it gets there, that'll do, so stop there, take the pipe out, let all the air out and um, just let them settle. So you've got one ball, you've protected down to, it says on the front. Minus, minus seven. seven. Minus seven. Careful, because that yeah. pipe's coming out the end again. Oops. Can't get past that bloody thing again there. Two, three, four. Okay. So that's the TD6 done as well. That's protected down to minus 31. So all the machine, we've just got the Audi to check, but Tina can check that as and when. We haven't got the keys for that outside. So everything's protected. We're ready for the winter. Um, don't know when the winter's getting here. So yeah, we're all protected for the winter. Um, the tractor's only down to minus seven. Um, I, it might get cold on that, if it does we'll just chuck something over it or we could actually nose it into the garage because um, well, the garage isn't done, it is empty so we could put stuff in there if we had to if we had a bit of an arctic blast uh, whether that's going to happen or not this year, I don't know Tina, the meteorological expert hobbit um, seems to think we're in for a cold winter after such a hot summer, it is possible I won't go into all the ins and outs and whys and, whys and wherefores that she thinks it's happening, but uh, <laughs> that's for another day. Bit of preventative maintenance yet again. Yeah, most people who watch this channel are probably mechanically minded. It's just another one of them little jobs to uh, keep on top of. Um, as I say, everything's going to be living outside this winter. Not me though, I should be stuck indoors. Central heating on. We'll be insulating the loft, uh, correction. Tina will be insulating the loft in a couple of weeks time. Um, so it'll be nice and toasty warm in the house. So that's about the only sort of job we really do to prepare for winter is check all the antifreeze, um, all the other maintenance we do throughout the year. Normally, when we keep on top of things. This year has been a little bit hectic with moving here and getting the, all the garden under control and and all bits and pieces. Why is your neck in? Bloody chattering away in the background. One thing about hobbits, they don't bloody shut up, do they? Or oh, don't stop pulling faces. So yeah, hope you like this video. Please click the thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. And from me and the Hobbit hiding underneath the tripod, because she can. <laughs> it's bye for now.